Welcome, colleagues, uh, to this uh, special um, conversation that we're going to have with our brother, Untile, all the way from Paris, um, undergoing some interesting uh, program there. But let's, let's just, just start slowly chilling a bit and uh, greet each other. How, how is uh, Francis Town, uh, brother Emmanuel? My brother, so good evening, uh, Tatera Pula and uh, Mr. Umpile. Good evening, colleagues. Francis Town is good. I would say it's uh, quite, uh, it's been quite uh, cold for the past two days, but today I think we um, we are not going to bed earlier, earlier than the, uh, the past two days. So we, we are good. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. From Francis Town, let's go to Buyanala and Adarapula. Well, thank you, Sam, and thank you, uh, Emmanuel. You know, they said in Botswana, if it's 18 degrees, it's very cold. So I need to acknowledge that. So uh, 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 the only thing I can say in Bujanala district, you know, Northwest has got four districts. Yeah. All the big one of the biggest districts is Bujana. The rest are smaller, coming in, catching up. Uh, but uh, it's one of those things which you normally put them together and becomes unique as Bujana as in Northwest and its own. But um, um, Peter, welcome back to uh, Northwest. Uh, uh, and we are here to learn about your, your life, learn about your story, so as to make sure that we inspire people who, are, who will be listening to this podcast. Thank you, Sam. I think I did make my small contribution uh, yeah. in terms of coming back to the, our life in South Africa. Yes, we welcome to him virtually to his home province, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is this is uh, Commercial Radio Worldwide. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. The shows are based on the principle called the idea. We inform and entertain, develop and educate, empower and support, associate and network. That's the idea. And indeed, we are excited to welcome Umpile Lebile, hailing from Mahiking in Northwest, and now finding himself in Paris, uh, France, undergoing a program, MSc Management of Technology Information System, in short, MOTIS, at the ESIEE in Paris. We will hear more about that. Um, I always like uh, tracking people on this wonderful journey uh, of learning. Omtile, welcome, my brother. For us, it doesn't feel like you are far away because every Monday and Tuesday we are in conversation with you. Greetings to you, and how are you doing today? Uh, thank you again, Dante Sam, and uh, greetings to all. Uh, yes, uh, today, uh, like you said, uh, it's a very interesting day, and like you said, we we continue on this journey to, you know, try to always improve ourselves. So today is just a very uh, sunny and also cold at the same time. This side, I know that in South Africa, it's very cold. So I'm, I'm well today in, uh, in short and the weather is yeah. good. Right? Yeah. And, and you haven't yet entered this, the, the, the time of, of the beautiful sunset of the city of Paris. Not yet. Still yeah, not not yet now. Maybe I think uh, July, August, then that that's when we'll get a good summer. At the moment, it's a bit of uh, spring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Beautiful, lovely. What we want to achieve with this conversation, Umtile, is the, for you uh, to inspire uh, the listeners and everybody else that will be uh, downloading this podcast in terms of the can-do attitude and the effort that is required to get to achieve the opportunities or use the opportunities 
that make themselves available to 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 many people. And of course, we want to learn from you in terms of what inspired you to apply for this program. Why France in particular of all the countries, especially considering the language barrier? And then of course, how does one learn about such opportunities, especially international ones? But perhaps uh, let's just quickly ask our, our, my co-host to tell, just to say a few words about themselves so that people know who are these people that are going to be engaging in conversation with uh, Umpile. Yeah, from my side, uh, I'm based in Bujanala. And normally people ask me where's Bujanala. I often say it, I'm in a center where I'm between Brez and Rustenberg in a small village called Barseba, which is situated uh, just, I normally say to the people on the route to Sun City, people ask you, can you uh, be so loud and clear in that small village? The answer is yes. Mm. And what I'm doing consistently, one of my key passion today and forward uh, is mentoring small entrepreneurs and coaching them in terms of growth. Do you know something which I, I, I think I was passionate about it before, but it never came out until I become almost full time looking for such opportunities. Mm. Uh, I realized that uh, actually my gift in this world is to make sure that I'm power. Mm. the other people to make sure that the South, South Africa is not behind in terms of what needs to happen in, in this country. Because critically, once you saw the small entrepreneurs uh, booming out, you know that uh, one family, there will be a food on the table. That's my passion. And this is my thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Apula. Emmanuel, I'm not sure if you can hear us uh, on, from the side. Yes, just a few words and tell people a bit about yourself and where are you based specifically in terms of your profile. It's, it's great to be here, uh, colleagues, uh, once again. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Umpile, uh, for, uh, you know, always being with us virtually and then Tadera Bula for all the great inspiration <clears throat> and the work that you're doing. Um, I think my work... Uh, resonates more with um, what the Tarapura is doing is yes, actually to serve. I think that's where um, <clears throat> our purpose comes in, um, saving the communities that we live, saving the people that we work. My passions are uh, actually into, I've got so much uh, interest in coaching, which is my, I think that's my, 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 my core work. Then I use my, all these gifts now through the storytelling and then um, consulting uh, organizations and uh, individuals in their workspaces or into their, you know, uh, startups, actually. But my focus mostly is on coaching. I believe now the more we work with people, the more we uh, people get um, aligned to their visions, it's easier to build an, um, a community of winners. It's easier to build um, an ecosystem. It's easier to build people who are now <clears throat> contributing uh, massively to the economies, uh, not only of our countries, but to the world at large. So that's, I think that's my purpose. And then I use also my gift of writing uh, also to transform people. So uh, I'm a published author of uh, three books. That's what I do mostly. And then I'm also a consultant in the space of organization development. That's my, my line of work. But above all, I, 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 I believe in human capital development. I, I believe, uh, uh, in in lifelong learning, which for which is why I think platforms like these they bring us uh, every now and then. We are not doing it for the sake of doing it. We are doing it because we know the impact of us having to learn every day, having to improve ourselves. The more we get to learn, the more it's easier now to, you know, um, disrupt ourselves in this uh, everyday ch uh, ch 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 changing environment where we talk about technology, we talk about, um, I think, everything to deal with, you know, um, you know, Internet of Things, data, all these things. So we need individuals who are always uh, on the move, who are always willing to to learn and also learn some of the ways of doing it. That's, I think, basically my short um, um, uh, way of saying um, greetings to the listeners out there and everyone who's tuning in right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Emmanuel and uh, Dr. Rapula. It's, uh, it's wonderful that we can be joining with our brother here, Umtile. Uh, Umtile, 
Before we engage with you about what's going on out there in France, um, you're the boy from Northwest, Mahike. Just tell us a little bit about uh, where did you grow up? What did you grow up doing um, around uh, Mahike? Uh, yes, thank you, Ntatese again. And also, before we start, I also like to thank Comes Radio, you know, for this great opportunity that uh, uh, is here. And for also just uh, like other colleagues have mentioned, the impact, uh, you know, the station, uh, the radio station is doing in the podcast that, uh, you know, we normally engage in, I would urge many of our listeners to continue supporting uh you know the the mission behind because it's a very good mission for me uh i am one of the people who receive the benefits of of this show and the impact that it does in terms of you know personal development and also other areas of development that you know we normally discuss here so yeah just to start with and yeah so yes um my name is umpile lepile uh, originating from the Northwest province. Yes, so like I said, uh, so I'm I'm from the northwest province uh, in Mafikim, uh, so one of the villages, a uh, small village, uh, just outside uh, town uh, called uh, it's called uh, Majeman to other fair to it uh, Lomanyaning. So that's where uh, I I grew up. And that's where, you know, the Lord God blessed me with, with that land. Uh, and yeah, so I'm, I'm coming from the Northwest. So they always uh, referred Northwest to, to Ntatema Ngupe, the late Ntatema Ngupe. So that's where I originate from. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, t- tell us a little bit about your upbringing, you know, uh, how was it growing up in that part of the world? Yes, so... Growing up in uh, the village, uh, it was, for me, uh, it was a, a good uh, experience. At the same time, uh, it was not a good experience. Like, uh, you know, uh, when I discuss this uh, thing about my upbringing, I always reflect to, you know, uh, one of your book, uh, Holistic Career Development Coaching and Mentorship Perspective. So it, it's it's a good book that I, I, I always uh, use to try and also to revisit, uh, you know, my upbringing. So my upbringing, it was uh, just a village. Uh, it's not known for a lot of things, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's a dynamic uh, village that is uh, changing with time. And where I grew up, I went to obviously primary school uh, in the same village, and you know most of my my childhood I spent in in that village. So it's a village that is uh, very precious to me, and it's a village that one day I believe I will have an impact to develop more. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what uh, what did you grow up? Uh liking most uh, 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 in that area. But when you are there in Paris, 
what is it that 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 takes your mind back home about the home? Yeah, so the village, I would say for me, it's it's a it's a very uh you know, it's uh like it's a very life uh area that is filled with you know every time you are in the in the place you'd you'd feel music some good music uh you'd see you know they they still have we still have uh like principles of ubuntu you know uh there are so many things that are, i would say that you know they built the the the, the village you know we know that motukibo to you know we we would see not often you'll see also like you know we still cherish uh some of our indigenous and indigenous knowledge whereby we still would see goats sometimes not a lot but maybe goats you know cows you know chickens and you know we still have that culture that is you know of, of livestock of you know how our great ones used to live so but obviously evolving with the times so Basically, uh, what I miss the most is just the people in the village, you know, the culture, there's the safety that is within the village uh, and yeah, the the oneness that we have uh, within the village. Although, you know, we might have some challenges, you know, every village or people have challenges, but uh, we always once come together and try to help one another in that village. So that's something that I, I like about uh the village life back home and yeah that's something i miss a lot and the food and all those type of things so it's it's something that i cannot even try to explain so it's something that is like very difficult to explain but uh those are the ways maybe that i can try to express it with mm, mm. beautiful beautiful um let 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 let's talk about this journey where did it all start and 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 how did it start i mean it's not every day that people just decide that they're going to go abroad and study and then indeed they go <laughs> right uh yes absolutely so like i said uh, i came from uh this village uh you know especially like when you are saying something along the line it's very difficult for someone to think that they would uh you know go overseas and 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 you know go outside the not only the village but also the country and not only the country also the continent it's something that is you know sometimes you see you cannot imagine yourself going out of the village when you are within the village most of the time and sometimes i always reflect back to you know our history as we know we used to live in apartheid sometimes i say that you know when the system was developed it was developed in such a way that you know even me when i was in the village i would never see myself out of that village so i feel like the orchestrators of that system were very harsh to the people but yeah jumping to that uh i never really thought about it when i was still in the village and then obviously i had to go to uh the university of johannesburg where uh, i feel like uh you know i i got my life very impacted and uh, very developed and i studied my my undergraduate degree until honors and then fast forward uh you know i learned a lot of things about you know being exposed to some of good information and and all that and and uh that's when i started doing my mba and even to do my mba it was you know you know when you are in the village most of the time you don't get exposed to like uh, good quality information and you know when you go to the city like johannesburg and you know other cities maybe cape town you get to realize that you know there is a lot of information that uh that you are able to 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 put your hands on and you are able to to utilize where else when you are in the village sometimes it's very difficult to get access to such just information not even anything just information and knowledge so yeah so then when i got to the university of johannesburg uh one of my friends from the village has told me that no man 
there's a there's something you know that you can do you know it's called an mba it was imagine at the time i was like finishing my honors i already knew there was an mba but uh that person from the village my home village uh in majiman Lemanya name told me that it's actually an mba that you should uh look into and then i i remember i was in Madibeng building in the University of Johannesburg, and I looked at the prospectors. I'm like, you know what? I would like to do an MBA. And that person uh, actually told me a lot of stuff about what it does and what it, opportunities does it give. And then that's where basically like the 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 journey began. And then uh, fast forward, I, I I was able to see also like you know there's a lot of gaps especially in terms of like you know I when I was doing my undergraduate degrees I saw that there's a lot of gap you know between you know seeing people of my my kind of people being in leadership roles and also uh being you know in management roles and you know good roles. I saw that, you know what, uh, that's something that also motivated me to do the MBA. I'm like, maybe uh, the people, my my people are maybe, they don't have proper qualification to be able to get into occupying those 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 positions because I don't see the balance there. Yeah, um, fast forward. Um, um, Pile, le, uh, I want to go back to the basics. You're speaking to Rapula. Uh, sometimes when I was in Mafeking, I was called, I was told, Majaman choose black stones. Do they still call it black stone? Uh, you know it very well. <laughs> no, I'm yes. just asking. I'm not doing yeah. it very well. And then yeah. there was a high school at the time called Situmo High School. Does it still exist? Yes, yes, it does. It does exist. Yes. yes. So, so, so that's why I see. When I look and listen to your conversation, this is a step we have missed. Uh, oh. That. I went through to Blackstone Primary School. From Primary School, I went to to my high school. Or decided no, no, I didn't go to to my high school. I went to Mabato High School. Then I classify as a Model C. You see, that's where the difference is. Oh. So from that, maybe, maybe, maybe from that angle, then your base becomes much more easy to land at the uh, University of Johannesburg. But if it's directly from Blackstone, chances are yes, your uh, uh, journey to University of Johannesburg might be a little bit bumpy. Just give us that small background. You know the village, the village feel. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 from the village feel, feel it will inspire that kid at Stumo High School. No, if Mpile can make it, I can do it also. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I I wanted to include it. I was just looking at the time, but uh, after you said no, that, we, we have we have the whole time for you. No, no yeah. rush. Okay, okay. No, no worries. Uh, I will I will include uh those those uh moments. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I I went to obviously a school by the name of Mukwezi uh primary school, which is under the kinship of is still under the kinship of uh the uh Kosi Mukwezi and I, I, I value uh most of their leadership within the village and where I I started my journey in Mukwezi uh primary school and it was a very good school also. Uh I love the principal at that school. She she was very uh she was a good woman, Mema Paturi. She was a very good woman who wanted you know kids to have uh best education even though uh you know we were lacking in a lot of uh, resource resources at that time we had like you know we didn't have uh what we call uh, uh, flushing toilets so it was a very uh, difficult uh, situation in that school but you know the principal was always trying to make sure that uh, we we get the best quality as soon as possible uh, to a point whereby I was in grade, I think grade four or five, they started, you know, trying to eliminate the pitlery toilets and try to, uh, you know, bring in the flushing toilet. Uh, but at that time, it was the time when I was like leaving my primary school. So then, uh, and yeah, in that school, uh, obviously it was not only the principal that that was also like looking 
and the best interests of the kids, even uh, the fellow teachers and the fellow community themselves, they were always trying to make sure that, you know, the school, when you are a kid, you know that you are protected, even to this age, you know when you are in 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 uh, my village, Lumanyanim or Majeman, you know that as a kid, uh, someone wearing uniform, you are protected from everything, even if you are in the wrong side of of things. But the mere fact that you're a kid, uh, it was something that was structured within the community to say that you know what, we don't want our our kids to be you know not going to school, but we want them to go to school. So that's why I say that's something that I also miss that Ubuntu, you know, thing of the community. So, yeah, and then I remember one of the, it was a more of a Christian uh, base school, not that it was a Christian base, but obviously the neighborhood is more Christian, but we have uh, Muslims. So, yeah, so every day we would go to school, would hear preaching every day in the morning, you know, some inspiration from, from, you know, we had one ideal pastor who always had to give us, you know, motivation and who always had to inspire us to be, you know, outside of, 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 of the village. And then fast forward, uh, yeah, then the principal, I had to, to, had to let, uh, let go of me and other uh, kids that were in my grade. Then I, I left the school uh, called Mukwezi Primary School to a school called the Toko Primary School, which is in the Majemansu also village, but it was more far away from home. And in Bitoko, uh that's when I, I met I met one of the best principal, I think uh I would say if I was like maybe in charge I would have said maybe she should have been maybe maybe a mayor or, or some manager in, in, in parliament in, in the Premier's office because everyone uh, who has went to be talk, I believe most of the people that went to be talk, they respect that uh, lady. And she was called, but she she's no longer with us uh, to this day. I mean, this day, Anabidua uh, Malifaladi, I would say, may his, her soul rest in peace. So she was a woman who loved very disciplined. And she would make sure that everyone, whether you are a teacher or you are a student, or I mean a learner, you would know that, you know, you have to have discipline and you have to wear uniform, you have to uh, conduct yourself as a student. Even the people, you know, in most of our schools, when you start going to middle school, to high school, you get people who like smoke and all do those things. But even those people, they feared her, they respected her, and in my language, they would say that she was a woman of like, you know, uh, I don't know how to translate that in English. But yeah, so that was the best school I would say that in my whole life, uh, based on all the schools that I went to, it was Bitoko. There, the school was also like, we lacked some resources, but uh, because of the leadership that was there, that's when I started uh, recognizing the importance of leadership because of the leadership that was within the school even my academic performance started to improve i started to love more of like school and you know trying to do more well and i started excelling in mathematics that was uh, something that i started excelling in and other other subjects so that was the school that that i believe that built me very hard and also it was a school where I, I I came more close to God in that school. Beautiful. Uh, let's hold it, uh, let's hold it uh, Thank you so much for that background. Uh, fast forward, then you find yourself having completing your MBA, and then you were, are working, and then all of a sudden, then this opportunity came. Just take us through how was this an intentional thing, or how did it come about? Just just inspire somebody that is stuck yeah. from there kind of schools and mm. they pass and find themselves in the University of Johannesburg and mm. now all of a sudden there's opportunity to go overseas. Is it just that, that easy as such or how did that happen? How did that happen? 
Yeah, yeah. So fast forward, yeah, my 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 basic education, it was not that easy to have imagined myself or uh, even going to university. I believe out of hundred percent of uh, the school from my high school, which is to my high school, maybe twenty percent or ten percent are able to go to university level. So yeah. Fast forward, uh, then I, I was, like I said, I was in, uh, at the school at Johannesburg, uh, uh, University of Johannesburg. Then fast forward, uh, I was uh, at JBS, uh, Johannesburg Business School. And that's when, uh, you know, I I started changing my mindset, was changed completely. I was a developed person and developing even more. And that's when I actually got to be introduced to uh, Tate Sam. And just before I, I met Tate Sam, there was a time when I was a, I was a business management tutor and it was in my final year and, I was, and we were discussing about studying overseas. And one of my friends, I think she was able to go to overseas or something like that. And I was like, ah, maybe I can go there. But it was something that uh you know i never thought about i was like nah let me not even think too much about it then fast forward i go to to do my mba then i met that the same and then uh, uh as a, my coach and i i thank the school for that i've met uh you that the same because after that uh you know there were a lot of things that uh started waking and started i started to become more awake and I believe that was also the mission of, of the school and also uh, your mission as, as a coach. Uh, that's when I, I started meeting with you and uh, we started discussing you know, during our coaching session. We started to discuss more about, you know, studying abroad. And yeah, that's when that uh, knowledge of my friend who went to, I think he went to uh, Hengare or another place in Europe started to come back and then you actually made me realize you know how important it is to study abroad and I remember there was a time where you even uh, told me that it was this is actually the best time for someone to try and go study abroad when you don't have family you know you know you don't have kids you still flexible with your life and all that you, you know that's actually the best time that that uh, you you can go and study overseas, of which is is true. That's why I believe even now that many people need coach. Maybe many people need to listen to you know radio shows like Comets Radio to get inspired and to change their perspective. And yeah, so yeah, that's that's how the the journey started. And in particular, we had a you know a conversation we held and then. You asked me to visualize myself living in one of the big city of the world, you know, moving, you know, from one area to another. And then to my surprise, that was, you know, I had a vision, you know, to study overseas. And I was not yet sure that it would be France, but I had that uh, France in my head. I don't know if you still remember that time that they said. But uh, before Sam, yeah, then before Sam, before, recall, before yeah. Sam recalled that, yeah. Uh, uh, um, Pide, uh, you come from English uh, media uh, institute or English media country, and you decided to go to France. Why France? What attracted you to France? And in your attraction to France, what is your current experience in France? We can share it with ourselves. Thank you. Mm. Yes. So, like I said, uh, you know, this thing uh, came. I think, you know, some way, somehow it came unconsciously to start with uh, that I want to come to France. But other than that, uh, you know, because even when we had that discussion, I, I didn't know why I thought of France, but it's something that just came, uh, and, you know, from it's just something that came through. And then I I started applying, you know, to study abroad and yeah and then to think about it uh you know funds for me i find it as one of the you know obviously it's a big nation there's a lot of uh i would say uh some bad and good history about it as we know that it used to formally be colonizing a lot of uh, countries 
so it, it in terms of uh, like the world uh, it, it does have uh, you know a strong impact in the world that's one of the maybe one of the other reasons why I chose to study here and also uh, the French language is also one of the how can I say it? Uh, one of the most spoken language I think is in the top five of the most spoken language of which I'm also trying to develop uh, the skill to be able to learn it. As you know that, like I said, it colonized a lot of uh, countries uh, within Africa and within South America and, and you know, some of the Caribbean uh, places. So it's well spoken. So it's something that is good to 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 grasp and to learn. And also uh, their education is also one of the best uh, in terms of, I think, you know, in terms of the world rating, uh, you know, it's it's good to have studied, to come and study here. So that's also another reason. And yeah, and in general, uh, when I compare it with my life uh, living here, it's, yeah, I feel like France has a, a history that, uh, you know, people can learn a lot of. And, you know, even if it's bad history, even if it's good history, you know, people can take a lot from, from that. So that's what I'm, I'm also trying to learn as I am here in this country. That's that's beautiful, Umpide. I I think you would agree with me. Um, um, one might say you 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 though it might be challenging, you you had uh, a good um um walk in your academic journey. Uh, I would say. Um, I hear you mentioning people like uh, Sam, uh, Coach Sam, uh, mentioning uh, Principal Uwakoskolo. Uh, okay, I forget uh, the name that you mentioned. Those both those two, uh, and their impact on the, your journey uh, during your academic um, life, uh, you know, primary school days and all the stuff. Um, you you and I come from um, villages where I would say sometimes to be where you are, you you need people like uh, that the same and uh, who, who who are always there for you sometimes. Uh, every now and then, um, in your own way, how 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 do you see the impact of now having somebody to look up to? In our profession, we are going to say um, the impact of coaching or having a coach and uh, somebody who says, uh, "Umpile, you can do this." That's mentoring, uh, in and uh, be it academics, uh, in everything that maybe uh, somebody or oh, oh, maybe a student. Who is now in Mafiking, uh, who is now in uh, um, rural places of South Africa, is uh, mm -hmm. maybe had, will have a chance to listen to this show. Um, uh, what would you say to them about the importance of having somebody who uh, believes in them, who you know guides them through um, uh, in, in in choosing their path? And I would say it wasn't easy for you to say uh, you want to be uh, where you are today or choose the profession that you are, but you had people. Who believed in your uh, in your journey? How important is this, Umpile? Maybe you could share a light to somebody there. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, like I said, uh, I would I would also reflect on uh, holistic career development coaching and mentor mentorship perspective uh, book uh, by author uh, that is Sam Zim. So that book, uh, you know, it, it, there is a session where it talks about you know. In the life of that the same how the upbringing and to mention uh you know when you are in the village some of the some of the time you are not able to to get access to coaches uh for example maybe because of maybe financial problems or maybe because of uh you know access to even know that there are coaches out there but uh, what happens in the village is that most of the time you would find uh, you know, my coach, for example, uh, if I reflect, it would be firstly, you know, my family. So those are the first people that are my coach, mm -hmm. my mother, my, my sister, my brother, my cousins and other people, uh, you know, 
specifically, especially, you know, uh, when you go in the village, that's, uh, you know, that's the most important thing that, you know, you get as a coach or as a mentor in, in, in your life. But that's, uh, to answer you, for me, uh, it is very important to, you know, sometimes I, 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 I listen to, to people like Ntate Mutsuni, uh, when she, or for example, maybe people that don't have parents, I feel like for them, it's very difficult, uh, for, for them to, to get, uh, like mentorship and coaching, especially if you don't have family. So basically for me, that's, that's where the mentorship started and, you know, you get people like your mother and because in my family, my mother was the one who was always, you know, coaching us about the importance of education. And like I said, it, after the family and even my sister and my brother, they were always like, you know, had that impartation from my mother about education, how important it is to then to develop and to change the, the, the people. And from the home, then comes a village. So like I said, even in the village, we had that type of coaching that says that, you know what, uh, education is important. If a kid is wearing uniform, you need to help them. You need to, if they're hungry or if they're head. Even now, if I go to the village and I see a kid crying or something like that, it would hurt me a lot. I would try to help them. Even if they are, if they are lost or something, I would make sure that they go home, something like that. And that's something that maybe either here in France is not shared type of a culture so that's where coaching started and yeah to to answer you also uh, after reflecting on that it comes from the village and the book explains it very well so it comes from the family the village the school and then you know it goes more but for me i would say uh you know coaching uh normally in villages is not really taken very serious and i feel like there is a need for coaches to always come once again. That's why for me, maybe in the future, I would also want to go back to my village and other village and to focus specifically on the, the young generation, the, the learners and even other people who just finished school, who don't know what they, they're going to do. So it coaching in a nutshell, it gives you some form of direction. It helps you in you know, going through things easy than going through them hard. So someone is impacting or is 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 having an, a, a positive in fact in, in influence in your life based on maybe their experiences or based on how others have went through the journey. It's something that is yeah. important. Yeah. Um, Pile, thank you so much for, for those reflections. That, that, that's great. And I'm glad you see a need to also go back and... Uh, and assist where you can. Let's talk about you. You have now have heard that you are successful, and you are planning to go to 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 Paris to start this program. How did you break the news to the family, friends, and uh, and um, loved ones in general? And how did they respond to it? Yes. So, yeah, like uh, for me, it was very uh, it was very difficult. Uh, to actually report the news to the family because it was something that was uh i like i said uh for me i had an idea to go study abroad but i i never envisioned myself you know that thing uh materializing so like again you know like we have mentioned, especially if you come from a village it's mostly most of the time it's very difficult to envision that but yeah, after listening and after getting the news that actually I've got this scholarship and I have to go, uh, I think September, I got the news around like February and I had to go around September because the academic year in Europe normally it starts September. So I had, at least I had some time also to reflect on the decision and uh, that's when I had to, you know, inform. At first, I had to inform, you know, my friend, because that time I was very close with my friend. I had to inform my friend and then tell them that, you know what, I've got this opportunity, but you know what, I'm afraid of going. I, at first, I wanted to decline the, 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 the scholarship, 
And then uh, I was like, you know what, let me talk to my my family. I spoke with my family and then they were also like, you know, it was a challenge for me to imagine myself living, and especially going to France uh, without the knowledge of, you know, the French language. So, yeah, then I had to speak with my family. I think over a call, I spoke with them to say, you know what, I've got this opportunity to go study abroad and what are you intake and then spoke with them and then uh they were you know obviously you know mothers how they are attached to their kids they were like no they would be negative but also positive because they know it's something that is good but at the same time they would not want you to leave their side so they would say no try to have mixed emotion to say no don't go at the same time they are afraid and all that but it was more positive from them. And I spoke with also my sister and she was like very you know, logical and very advisable to me to say that, you know what, don't even hesitate, take this opportunity and uh, go with it and see how it goes. So, uh, which I appreciate very much. And that's where I had to break the news. And then uh, obviously I had some time to spend with them. So I had to go home and, and do other stuff and meet with them and yeah that's how i i basically had to introduce the news and they took it well but at the same time it was uh, you know it's, it's hard but at the same time it's good umpile um what do you think and what do you believe could have uh, been a hard moment to convince them that this is a good opportunity so uh there i uh, uh let me just rephrase your question so how did i how did uh, how did i want to like uh what to call no no what, what i want to bring what i say is that uh, you face challenges uh what are big challenges small challenges uh and then uh you still start continuing talking to them in terms of these opportunities uh, you can mention whatever you mentioned in terms of that when did you felt now everybody now agrees with me give me go ahead to go abroad what that aha moment said yes i've made it yes okay okay yes i i get you now so yes for me uh because that time when i had this uh news i was actually like uh not feeling very well but uh, i was a bit uh i think like uh yeah i was going through a lot of things i can say something like that but but uh the aha moment was obviously like i said when i i had spoken with uh my my family and then especially my sister and then uh you know she mentioned you know some of the opportunities that are out there obviously you know i was also knowing that this france and all that but you know that's when i got to understand like the advantages of going overseas and you know and also reflecting on also what we have already spoken with the same about how the advantages are especially when you are young so my aha moment was then when also my family said, you know what, at the moment, you don't have a lot of responsibilities and, you know, you are able to to go now while you still not have a lot of responsibilities. And actually, this is a, a good a personal development experience. So why not take it? So that was when I was like, oh, yeah, you know what, uh, actually, this is an opportunity that I must take. And you know, getting the blessings from my family was one of the things that made me have that aha moment. So when you arrive, Beautiful. yeah, when you arrive in yeah. France, yeah, when you arrive in France, mm -hmm. often the new environment, completely new. Uh, I'm making assumption nobody speaks to Tuana, especially Tuana Sakuma Hiku. So. Okay. 
እና ማርገስ ባና ሆነ ንጉስ ባና ወረስ ናርባሩሉ ንጉጽን እ እዛና ኮፍራንሲ ኮፍራንሲ ቦጓስ ፍራንሺ አሁን ኦፖጓለ ነስቶና ፈስቲንግ your first entry or your first barrier is a language you may have spoken french in south africa but now when you speak with the french guys uh, because for them they are uh, doing smoothly running smoothly it is still going to be a barrier for you until you get adjusted to it what programs have you what did you put in place for you to uh, first thing acclimatize to environment uh, uh, conditions are not the same as here in in majaman so or perhaps in johannesburg for argument say uh, life is different this space uh, how did you adjust or how long did it took you to say you know what mo asiko majaman mo asiko ug to france i'm not sure where which town are you in france but it's, it doesn't matter for now i need to now adjust as quick as possible first thing the winter in 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 south africa starts from may the winter here it starts from perhaps december november i'm not sure you will tell us more about it how did your system adjust to get acclimatized to the environment the reason why i'm asking that a kid ko ko majemanje ko blackstone oh it really is and he is or he is visualizing umphile even if he's not in my in my in in my german so oko ma hikeng as a whole oko tlelets and wa go visualize or this is doable but the environment is the same how did umphile adjust to currently as you speak to him he's so fluent he's flowing uh in that flow of it he is uh, in, in uh, sort of encouraging other kids but you can land in french and speak french mm. what do the barriers how say and talk about this one how did you overcome those barriers uh yes yes thank you for the question so yeah it was uh like like i said we know when after we got to know like i got to know the news around february i had to start thinking about it and actually you are right you know uh when i told one of my friend <laughs> uh he's like uh for me man uh you know i've made up my mind i will never go to the babylon world so he says he doesn't want to go outside africa <laughs> so every place outside africa he calls it the babylon world so he says there is a lot of you know evil things happening there you know he still has that mindset so yeah and then that was like a conversation that we used to have most of the time before i left so yeah and then but obviously i also that was also a wake up call for me to start preparing about you know the things that he was saying that you know evil and all the things that you can imagine as a, someone maybe in mafike or you know and they, they were that person was educated but he still had that stigma and that mindset even to this day he says i tell him you must come here he still he still is still difficult for him to imagine you know the world outside africa or, or even outside south africa but yeah so for me that was a challenge a challenging moment and obviously after I have, after having considered all the trade offs and the risk and opportunities i had to start learning french which uh was something that i started having classes of french and i would also want to mention that you know the department of higher education is doing a good job uh for me i've um, i've been a beneficiary of the work that they are doing and all the other you know, partners that they have so i would say they must continue to do the work to to inspire you know people from the villages like myself and other people that they are making impact on so yeah when i came in france uh obviously uh it was a bit challenging like you said like it's something that is totally different you come here the moment i left south africa it was like spring we were coming from winter and then uh it was yeah it was like spring but at you know september in south africa it's a bit cold nowadays the weather are uh, like 
uh, like climate change and all that. It was a bit cold. We're coming from being cold. And then when we came here, it was like it was December or it was like very hot. So the moment I landed here in France, the first thing I I had, you know, encounter with before the language and all that, it was like, why is it so hot like this? Because I just came from South Africa. I didn't even know it was this hot. It was like a mean Limpopo or, you know, a painting. It was very, 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 very hot. And when I landed in the airport, obviously, the first thing you would see is, uh, you know, people parle français. You are like, what the hell is happening now? So people were just talking the language that you don't know. Yeah, you see a lot of different uh, diversity, like, you know, Arabs and, you know, Asians and all those type of things. I know we have them in South Africa, but in uh, specifically Paris, like, because I landed at the airport in Paris and I was like Johannesburg and Paris, you know, Johannesburg, uh, it's like Paris, like it's even like, I don't know how I can compare it with, with Johannesburg. But when I came in, it was so different. I see a lot of different people. Sometimes some people, you know, I never like, it's just a completely different type of vibes that I get, I got from the, from the airport, but luckily I never got lost and I already have made friends on my plane. Some of them, they knew French, so they assisted me and then I was able to go out and yeah. And then in general, yeah, that, very interested in that, uh, in those, the, those three points. Uh, yeah. uh, the one is the, the, the last one is the DSS address following Rapula's question your arrival, but I'm still interested to hear how, what kind of send off did you receive from the family and friends and how was the experience flying such a long distance? I, I assume it was for the first time you're taking such a long distance flight. And, and, and what thoughts were occupying your mind as you were moving further and further and further away from, from home? Okay. Obviously we don't have to spend the whole time on that because we still want to get into the real real content of your show or program, but I'm just, I just don't want us to, to deny you the opportunity to relive those, mm. those moments. Yeah, so yes, uh, it was uh, a bit difficult. Obviously, uh, I had to meet my, 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 my family before I left and uh, it was difficult, you know, send off the goodbyes are never good, especially for me, you know, I'm, I'm never good at the goodbyes. So at some moment I felt like crying, but I had to be a man and be strong. I had to leave in the morning and uh, one of my home girl also received the, the almost the same uh, scholarship uh, by the name of Gito. So at least when I left already, like, you know, the family, they will just wish you all the blessings and pray with them. And you invite God and, and and the angels to be with me and, and all that. So that was a good uh, send off already. I've spent some time with them. Uh, and then, yeah, then I leave. At least the other thing that was good with me, I left with one of my homie. Then we went to uh, the airport and yeah. So yeah, and then it was a different experience. Uh, you know, I've never traveled that long. Like I think it was almost like almost half a day to come this side, or even a day to come this side. Yeah, I think it was a day. So the long journey, it was difficult. I was home because I went with Carter and actually Carter is a very good, uh, you know, uh, what we call a, a mm-hmm. plane, um, airline uh, or plane, uh, you know, service. So they have like, uh, what we call, they are more Islam and my I grew up in Islam community. So yeah, I, yeah, my thoughts were more on praying and, you know, just asking God for good ways. And when you go in the airline, you see they will give you scriptures because the Holy Quran and the Bible are almost the same thing. So they would give you scriptures and then you would look and the memories that would be there is like, hey, you know, I miss my family already. I don't know the decision I'm doing now, but you know what? I don't know if it's a good decision or not. Did I do my calculation well? You know, all those type of things come into your, into your mind and 
it was a bit challenging for me because it was my first time and yeah, those are some of the, the moments that I had. And yeah, it was it was a bit of like I was happy also that I'm moving out of my comfort zone because you know uh I have read a lot of books uh during the time before I left and they were always talking about you know being out of your comfort zone, developing and all that. So in the back of my mind i had those things and some of the blessings from home and understanding what is the mission and what is the goal so that was the thing that uh some of the things that i thought about when i was in the play to paris mm-hmm. beautiful uh maybe let's let's talk a little bit about i'm sure somebody is listening and they really want to know what is this program all about who who, who is the sponsor how did you know about it and what does it involve? Uh, and maybe just take us through that because I think that's helpful as Rapula was saying, somebody in in my king is listening and say, I also want to be part of is it. Is it part of the Department of Higher Education uh, initiative? initiatives? Yes, yes. So just before I, I, I come to that, I would say like, you know, a lot of uh, young uh, people and you know that would want to 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 start going overseas i think it's not that difficult to go overseas it's just a matter of you know when you put something in your mind and or you talk to people relevant people like for example i was able to talk to that they said i already had the idea that he made sure that it, it, it some way somehow materializes so once you have that idea of wanting to go overseas, it's always better if you are in university setting, go talk to like, you know, your international department within your institution of higher learning, different institution of higher learning have a, like an international office. And you most of the time, even finance, most of the time you'd find that universities have a lot of opportunities for for people who are looking and going overseas, especially when you you have great marks or good marks. It doesn't have to be like too much good, good, but as long as maybe you make sure that you can prove that, you know what, I can do well when I go out. That's uh, some type of a thing that uh, maybe someone out there thinking uh, they want to, to, to study overseas. So that's the thing about maybe going to uh, ask within the international offices of different institutions. I know for sure that there are different uh, positions that are then also talking to lectures. So most of the lectures, they do have access to this information. As you are in the village, like I said, sometimes it's a bit difficult when you're in the village because some information, some way, somehow, it doesn't end up being filtered to the, to, to the villages. but just being yourself asking more information and going to universities and also with that our time now we have so much access to a lot of information youtube tiktoks and you know also listening to a digital platform like Comesa radio some of the things that you can do to try and find uh, information about studying abroad and then yeah so for me the i i, I applied during my MBA, because I, I self-funded almost uh, my MBA, not all of it until I got a fund, funding. But while I was doing my, my my first year, I was funding myself and it was very expensive because MBA is one of the most expensive uh, degree. So I, find it, I found it difficult and then I had to start applying for funding. And then that's when I found uh, an organization by, I mean, yeah, an initiative by the name of, you know, NESP. So it was an initiative by the Department of uh, Higher Education, which is called, uh, the program is specifically called Nurturing Imaging Scholar Program. So that's when I found that program when I wanted to find like how I can fund my MBA. But luckily I saw that, oh, they have programs for overseas. Let me apply for it. That's when I applied for it. And obviously, when you start applying for this these programs, you need to have a vision about the end goal, what you want to do when you go overseas. 
what do you want to study and stuff like that. So yeah, when I got my hand into this opportunity, I applied and it was uh you know it was offered by our government uh and then that's when I applied for it and then uh they had some requirements that you needed to complete. So obviously you have to apply just like when you apply to university. There are some information that will be needed, some motivational letters that you must have. So those are some of the things that you must have at the back of your mind. With a lot of technology now, you can always be able to to utilize it. I wish I could have utilized this technology that I'm exposed to now when I was applying, but now it's much easier. So that's when I applied. I got interviewed. So normally they would have an interview stage. And then I was actually intimidated when I was interviewed. I was the only person who was without a PhD on that uh, panel of the 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 leaders that were uh, you know, interviewing me. And yeah, they, they were very intimidating, but I, I did not let that intimidate me because even in my MBA, I was there, I think the youngest and a lot of people there, they already had like a lot of achievements, but I did not let anything intimidate me, but just to take the opportunity to learn. So that's what I did in the interview. I learned a lot from that. And and then I had to also convince uh, them that, you know what, uh, I'm the right person. And then obviously, fast forward, that's when they make a selection. And then after that, uh, they give you the feedback. So in the nutshell, there is a lot of information that is out there on the internet universities and also coaching like talking to coaches it there's a lot of information that one can use in order to study abroad and then uh, i'm not sure if i i answered your question uh well that they said or there's something i'm missing no no i think i think you did respond uh very very well um uh, 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 how did you overcome the intimidation of the PhDs when you're doing your interviews? What is, is it an issue of hunger or an issue of determination or is it an issue of you know what? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Yeah, for me, because I was working that time, so for me, it was. Even in my job, when I used to work, most of the time, uh, I don't know why, but most of the time, I always find a lot of people, senior people within my table, maybe because I was a, a IT business analyst. And uh, most of the time at work, uh, I would maybe there would be some system problems and I would have to, you know, Sometimes I would be called, and when I get called, I would be talking to like very senior people at the group level, and some of them senior people at the business uh, unit level, and we would I would have to maybe talk and maybe make some suggestions. So I think that enabled me to you know to try to help me dealing with this, and also there were some uh, you know some of the project strategic project like cloud computing strategic project that I was I was handling at work and that gave me some form of confidence and some ability to you know because in my nature myself I'm humble I uh, whether like I see everyone you know most of the time or no I know for sure you not know, even people like normally I just see everyone as a person so that's something that also helped me but yeah, in that interview, it was very difficult because, uh, you know, when I opened the, the the interview and then they introduced themselves and I'm like, yo, what is happening here? Uh, am I in the right place or what is happening? And the type of questions that they were asking, uh, you know, there were also some intimidating questions, you know, about some technology, but luckily because I always read and I was also having some practical knowledge of some of these technologies. So I was able to answer them very well because, you know, the University of Johannesburg is known as, uh, you know, the father of the fourth industrial revolution. So some of the questions they asked, I was well prepared to answer them. So in my preparation, 
it helped me a lot to deal with that uh, based, based on that i uh, overcoming that intimidation probabilities are <clears throat> before this opportunity or while the opportunities came on you were also an employee as you just mentioned yes 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 if so if so how did you break the news to your employer and how did they receive your your news that you are now going to disband them or dump them go somewhere else overseas yeah so yeah that was like a bit challenging but obviously during that time also i was not well uh that time so i also needed uh some some to deal with some of my health issues at that time so at least that also gave me an opportunity for them to understand very well but yeah so it was a bit challenging for me to like uh to say that you know what because uh, for me i look at the you know the organization as they helped me a lot in terms of developing myself uh in terms of my my career path because i was involved in a lot of projects and all that and you know when someone develops you and helps you and then now you have to move and uh they actually at that time when i left they needed me the most but uh it was very difficult but you know at least i was also not well so i could say that i was not well and they could understand that you know what you have uh, valid points here so for me that that was something that i appreciated and yeah it was difficult i remember my 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 former boss saying that to me that you know what can you stick maybe like three months more or something like that until we find someone but at that time i was not even well so she i uh, could tell that you know what even if i try i'm, I'm not that well so so now how are you now umpile health wise yeah health wise no i was i was good before i left home uh but how are you now uh in terms of uh now oh. um yeah so no I'm, I'm yes i recovered before i i left uh so yeah i obviously uh after i i left the cause the opportunity came and then like february and stuff like that so before i even left i i also did start some business after i got well and stuff i also started some business and it was going well just to 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 show that i'm, I'm well so but at the moment i ended up recovering and yeah i was i was i was well before mm-hmm. i left so will you say all in all from september 2023 to where you are now things have been extremely well or, or are there some challenges that you in the program itself that you will want to share with us as a way of educating others that it's not always plain sailing yes yes so yeah like cause uh, like the program obviously like uh, if i go back also to that rapula's question about you know how did you experience the place the new place cause when i came here we had some lessons so the department of higher education and you know some other universities such as Rhodes and uh, MUT DUT and i think other organizations that were involved they tried to give us some light about how it's going to happen and stuff but when i came here obviously you plan and you know there's sometimes on i see some times on linkedin there's a picture whereby they say when you plan something you plan a, a, a linear type of a plan but in reality you would be going up in the mountains and facing like open uh, doors and stuff like that so for me it was that that type of experience i even myself when i came here i thought you know what i'm the man i'm, I'm gonna deal with everything i've dealt with everything and all that type of a good attitude which is something that everyone needs but yeah when i came here there were some challenges that i had to face uh not even with the cause in general like you you know the culture shocks 
the language barrier, just for example, the administration of just opening a bank, a new bank, you can take like 10 days to just get a new bank. And some some little things like that, they can, you know, frustrate you to a point that you were like, why was I going to, why did I come here? So there were some like challenges that even when you come here, you know, sometimes I came here with some of my plugs. Next thing when I come here, they don't use the same plugs as they use at home. Like some of those things, there were so many like obstacles that uh, try to delay you. And then coming to the course, uh, obviously, uh, after all those type of negative things, but obviously I don't have to focus only on the negative. There are some also good good things that are there about you know France and and all mm. that. Well, what did you in find? So what did you find interesting that you didn't know of the moment you left, you arrived there? What what stood out for yeah, you yeah, okay. about about the city Paris and France at all? Yeah, so. There were so many negatives at the start when I came in because, you know, when you adapt to a new environment, it's always going to be like that. Even someone, I think, someone goes to South Africa from here, they will struggle a bit with some of the things. And sometimes those things, they can break you down to a point where you like, I want to go back home. But if you, yeah, sometimes it can happen. But some of the things that stood up, obviously, you know, the first thing when you want to come to France, you have to go to the Eiffel Tower. So the nature of like their tourist type of vibes that they give, it's very, it's it's unique in its own way. Like they cannot, I think, replicate how it is being experienced. So those are the things like just going to the Eiffel Tower, and because in my in my class, so what they did is they organized an intercultural type of a session where we we were like being taught to how to integrate with a bit of the people. So yeah, so the thing about it that I liked more about France was like going to the Eiffel Tower and the museums. They are filled with so much, you know, rich history about you know some of their leaders napoleon louis and all those type of history because i am also more into history and the wars and all those things so i got to read some i got some documentaries that i watched and i i was like oh this is where all these things were happening and you know that's something that i i enjoyed and apart from that also the they have a lot of uh, a lot of advantages for students, so you get a lot of advantages. Unfortunately, I came when I was like a bit older. But if you are like under twenty six, you get the maximum like you know opportunities. You get uh, transport system here is very well advanced compared to South Africa. So those are some of the things that that are very good even with accommodation, you get some discounts as a student, you get a lot of food from the school and all those type of things are like, you know, they help you, especially if you now have to adapt to being a student again and you don't have a, a like any source of income that is good. So it helps a lot. That's something mm. that I like mm. about. Share with us the structure of your course and also the, the, tell us about the, 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 the institution, the university. Somebody yes. now is spinning as a head, you now said, I'm, I'm interested in this type of university that seemed to be the best choice for you. And then, of course, the program you are doing. Yes, yes. So I'll be, yeah, so, yeah, the, the university is called Gustafé University. It's, it is one of the good, uh, university. It's not uh, the best, best, but it's one of the good university. And under the University of Gustafé, there is uh, a university called, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like University of Johannesburg. It has a lot of punches, UK and APK, so and all that. So under the university, there is one called Asia Bari, so, which is where I am in. It used to be a private school at first. Now it's a it's a like almost like a public school, 
so it's one of the most like uh best one of the best uh uh engineering school in uh paris so it was ranked i think uh, last time it was ranked like number one uh in terms of like engineering and yeah so the nice thing about it is that uh you have a lot of engineering students from different backgrounds and different you know there's a lot of diversity within the school alone and the program that i'm now involved in is called uh masters of science in uh, management of technology and information system so it's more of like an international degree because even when you go to uh, our school some of the programs are offered in french only but this one is offered like in in english only and it's not only the one that one alone so what they are doing is most of the technology degrees they offer them they offer them in english so that they can learn from other students from other universities and like that sharing of knowledge within the university so yeah that was that's uh, the course i'm currently doing so it's 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 called motis in short and uh, it's more ideal for people who sorry who would want to like be maybe managers or leaders in terms of you know bridging the gap between technology and also uh technology and uh, management type of vibe so it goes well also blades well with my mba because some of the modules i see they are more similar to mba the one i did because my mba was more digital so yeah so that's uh, in the russia that's the course that i'm doing and it it's more on developing like public speaking skills it develops more of interpersonal skills and also it it also dives into politics at the same time so that's why i like it more and it's not just a technology degree but it's multidiscipline type of a, a course mm. wow sounds interesting and uh, and how many phases uh, is is made of and which phases have you already completed yes so yes so and the other thing i forgot to mention was that also the nice thing about it is that you get a lot of diversity within it so basically now i think in our class we have like i think 13 nationalities so spanning from like you know nigeria kenya china and other in pakistan and uh, i think iran and other places like so it has a lot of diversity so when you share that type of uh, diversity there's a lot of creativity within uh the class and the different perspective that you 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 nurture and you won't get maybe in a school that is like maybe doesn't have a lot of diversity so that's and also diversity in terms of also people doing engineering sometimes you just meet with them and you get to improve yourself in other skills not only uh about your course and in terms of uh, how it's organized it's like i think it's uh six not six a uh, one year six months uh program where you have to do like almost a year of course study and then internship and currently i i'm, I'm done with the coursework i'm doing like a project uh where you know you are dealing you are working we are working with a startup here in paris uh to help them uh try to develop in terms of you know become more digital and become uh or optimize their their business processes uh trying to leverage what we have learned from uh the the course and the other important thing is even the lectures that we have they coming from different region so that's something also that is very nice about this course you learn from different perspective of of people so at the moment mm-hmm. that's where i am i'm just finishing the 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 project and then i will have to find an internship which is like a bit challenging sometimes because of 
yeah, like language barriers and stuff and things like that. But yeah, most of uh, the previous people who did the same course, they struggled the same things at first, but eventually they were able to get something and then they were able to complete their course. So after the internship, you do like a mini dissertation and then after the, the dissertation, you are now you completed the, the, the course. Mm. Mm. So the plaid end the time is which month, which year? You mean the end? When I completing the entire course, when is it? When when is the Yes. So uh it's planned for like next year, I think June, May. Mm. When uh we graduate. But yeah, it will just yeah, that's that's the plan date uh according to, to scheduled you know, plans and yeah, that's the mm. yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, um let's talk about the I'm sure you are not only focusing on studies. Give us your 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 experience of life in Paris. You know, the, the culture you touch on that even a bit, but tell us about the food, the 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 people, the politics, music. Did you get to see the spring box last year during the World Cup? And how is the atmosphere currently of the Olympics? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot around you other than just studying that you are attracted. Yes, yes. So yeah, basically, yeah, that's uh, there is a lot of things to do. But the only thing that you know that is a constraint most of the time is like the language barrier. So I used to study business management, and they say when you want to go outside you know, your country, the most important thing is cultural difference and language barrier. So those are the things that I now face, not I used to face in the textbook, but now I face them and I understand what actually they meant when they're talking about that in the textbook. So in terms of like uh, the place, it's very good. Like I said, the experience here that you get in Paris, it's you. Uh, for me, I've not found it anywhere. It's like some good vibe. I uh, even when I go with some of my friends, you know, they would say to me that you know what, uh, you won't get any of this type of experience. Even some would say even within Europe, you won't find some uh, experience like this in Paris. So there is a there is a nice culture of diversity that is every time you go. Even now, you go to the the tourist areas, you always see people taking pictures and just happy and all those type of things. There, there will be a lot of people like that. And yeah, the people here in Paris, uh, like I said, because uh, I also went to to other maybe cities in 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 France. I think I went to like three cities already. But the cities are different. So in the people are also different. So here in, in France, I mean Paris, the you would find people in general, a lot of people like to say French people are not very uh friendly, of which I would I would agree with, uh, especially if you don't know the language. I think that's why because most of the people would not like speaking the language with you. They would rather speak with someone who speaks French, but some obviously uh, just, especially in Paris, you would find some English speaking people, other cities outside Paris, you might find it difficult. And the food, the food is very nice. You know, you find the best, uh, you know, uh, baked food, uh, uh, cookies and, you know, some food uh, pastry, you would find the best pastry here in, in, in Paris. You know, they have something that is called croissant. So it's a very nice uh, meal that, and like a sandwich or something like that. Uh, it's very good. So you'd find a lot of uh, good baked food. Uh, that's something that I, sweet food, if you like sweet food, sweet baked food, you'd find it here. It's, and it's very good. And mm. in terms of, Politics, uh, for me, I'm a person who also has an interest in politics, uh, especially knowing the impact it has in society and the world at large. 
uh here the politics are a bit you know it's it's the way it's structured is different from how we have the 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 government in south africa i think we have here we have like prime minister i mean it's different it's completely different from how we have it in south africa and you know the mm. president and the the prime minister mm. type mm. of uh, and how was your experience of the of the of the rugby world cup yes and yeah coming back to that i feel like uh for me that was actually the best time i had uh when last year when we had a rugby world cup so the work and the rugby world cup was like very very good uh because uh we met i met a lot of south africans and and also for us to have won the world cup when i was here i was like oh thank you god we won we won the world cup <laughs> so so it it was actually a very good experience uh taking into consideration like i watched all the games from the i think not all of them precisely but almost all of them i was watching them almost every every time i didn't get the opportunity to go into like watch them in the at the what we call the stadiums because obviously there were a lot of challenges at that time i i was not really knowing the place because it started exactly when i just arrived here and i was starting to settle in and all those things but it was a good experience and you know sometimes you would be going out to watch so normally you would watch it mostly at uh there is a lot of big screens in the city where people would come and, and watch it. It's actually a good environment because you meet different people. I met some South Africans who came just for the World Cup. They were very friendly. And some of them, I, 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 I still speak to them to this day. And yeah, and also some of the other students that are here, we met during the, World, uh, the Rugby World Cup. And some of them we still talk and we still, you know, sometimes uh, have a discussion as South Africans. Mm. Mm. And now, now you are ready for the Olympics, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so now the school, uh, last time actually, I think it was like uh, last week, uh, we the school organized a trip for us to participate in sports. So I did some athletics, uh, like running, it was like a you know a warm up for the olympics so we went to a city close to lyon so lyon is the second city, biggest city after paris so we went to a city called Vichy that is just close to lyon where we did some sports so i'm also myself i i like keeping fit so sport is also one of the things that i also like doing as a hobby just to enjoy myself and yeah, that's where we started preparing ourselves for the Olympics. And you can see even now at the Eiffel Tower, they already put the uh, Olympic rings uh, on the Eiffel Tower. So the environment, the trains and all that, it's structured. I'm just worried how packed it would be because, you know, already it's just chaos sometimes. But when the Olympics come, I don't know how hectic it would be. But I'm, mm. I'm wondering. but I'm sure it will be a beautiful uh, 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 moment to experience. Uh, I mean, the whole world will be in, in, in France, in Paris in particular. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I want to also just enjoy. I know some of my friends that have been here for long, they are like, no, I'm going to Spain. <laughs> I'm going to other places because it's going to be crowded. But the problem is maybe they've been here for so long. So, but yeah. for me, yeah, I want to just uh, enjoy the moment and, and see if uh, maybe there are some things I can participate on. But there's, there's not everybody in the world that happened to be in Paris, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when you are there, so it's also a good that as you do your studies, you also become part of the, it's a world event. So, and I'm sure some of us never had the opportunity to be at the Olympic city, you know? Uh, so yeah, great. Uh, 
if I'm an aspiring, aspiring student like you, what advice will you give me if I want to follow on your footsteps? Yeah, so uh, I think for me, uh, if someone wants to do maybe the same course or wants to follow in the footstep, uh, looking and reflecting on my my life, I would say uh, straight from varsity, you know, just stay away from uh, a lot of things that your mother or your family said you must stay away from, you know, things maybe like a lot of things that are not good, you know, just stay away from those things and, uh, you know, focus on working hard. Because one thing I also have realized when I was like in varsity, I was more, when I came from home, I was more competitive, more like always wanting to be the best. So that's something that uh, it's important to also have in the head Although when, when I started doing my MBA, I started having a different view. But for me, it's something that is very important to have, especially when you just went into varsity. And also, once you are in varsity, uh, even when I was here, I wanted to do some part-time job. But because of some language barrier, I couldn't do it. But I would advise someone who is in varsity if they want to have a good uh, life ahead, or just don't focus, focus, make sure you are the best in your school work. But when you are in your schooling time, make sure that you learn as much as you can, like from internship, especially things that would add value to you at the end. And also get yourself a coach, a mentor, someone who also has been through that experience, leverage that experience. And most importantly, mm -hmm. you know, always, if you, I don't know, if you don't believe in God, but if you believe in God, uh, you know, angels just always invite God, your angels to, to be with you and uh, to help you uh, in times when things are very tough and very, you know, blurry. That's mm -hmm. something I would say for, for anyone looking towards and always uh, be open-minded to learning new things and have a, mm. a goal, what you want to achieve and work towards mm. that and that goal. So do you have a formal language course that you attend? Um, yes, but I think it doesn't work very well. I think for me, the best way I've learned is through engaging with, uh, you know, the locals, uh, like when your book, when you said when you were in Germany, you started playing soccer and that's how you, you were able to just, you know, try to get hold of the language. So for me also, it's the same type of feeling to say that mm. uh, the best mm. way is to just communicate with the locals, try to, mm. yeah, the, the, the formal way helps, but it doesn't help a lot. Mm. So you are picking a bit of lingo and uh, you are starting to, I'm sure when you get to the train and uh, you meet people and uh, uh, Komazava and Titapel, <laughs> yes, Titapel, uh, Umpile, Yezi, a student. <laughs> yeah. So you, 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 just, you just ambush it <laughs> until you get it yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, I, I was actually shocked when you, know, you started talking French. I'm like, ah. I don't even know a piece of German. I must start, start learning German now. <laughs> <laughs> Language is is, a, is an interest, as you said. As you play football, uh, you come across all these continental European languages getting together, and Paris is the center. And I had to learn those basics, you know. Excuse mm. moi, je suis. Uh, same thing uh, on your pizza apparel. To the telecom. Yeah. Can I add it too? No, don't worry. I it's a it's a broken language that you must learn before you go to every city. I'm sure you by the Olympics time you will have picked up it. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. I hope I hope we have also inspired you 
by asking you to talk about yourself, reflect back a little bit, connecting Paris with uh, Mahiki, and uh, and then also just just to reflect a bit and make sure that uh, you pick up the things that maybe you still have to pay attention to, uh, other than just focusing on your studies. I hope uh, at this point we 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 achieve that, and maybe we should check out a bit. How is that? Yes, yes, yes. How is That's... the family? How is the family back home in my eating? How often do you talk to them? Yeah, so I I I I took your advice from the book, you know, always keeping in touch with those uh uh back home. So I always make sure that I talk to them almost on a daily basis. And uh if not I text or you know, make sure that they are good. But in terms of how they are, it's I think they are all good. Uh that's that's yeah. how I try. I have I, I have Tulufeto on the line or here with us on the on the listener platform. Oh yes, it's all I, Oh I didn't see her. She told me she's gonna join. Uh, yeah. Is that your sister? Yes, yes, yes. Welcome Tulufeto. You've been listening all the way. Thank you so much. I didn't want to distract uh, um, Umpile by saying you are here. <laughs> He did that, he did that to give it out all. And then I, I see Katero. I don't know if it's Katero, your friend. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yes, I think, yeah, yes. Yeah. The other two, I can't recognize them because they didn't put their names. So yeah, it's good. The, through technology, you are far and yet not that far. Yes. What, mes what message can you give to Lucille and Katero to share with everybody else at home? Yeah, I just say uh, I love them. <laughs> what I, I can say, and yeah, and yeah, they also should uh, be in touch with the uh, with Cometa Radio. You will always mm -hmm. get a lot of personal development, mm -hmm. and you know, just mm -hmm. keep. I'm not sure that they are aware that we have you every Monday and Tuesday here online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they must join and uh, see yeah. how we just give them. Yeah. Uh, so and Katleo, whenever you feel like you're missing Umtile, just just look for uh, uh, Comesa Radio Worldwide on Podbean every Monday evening at 1900 hours and Tuesday 1900 hours. Only when he is busy in class, he is not here. But otherwise. He's always with us, with our brother from Francis Town in Botswana. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, are you there? <laughs> I think he dropped out, or he's on the other yeah. channel. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, Umpile. Please uh, enjoy the the moment. Uh, I know, I know you're going to do well in the course. That one, I I'm not, I have got no doubt about it. And uh, yeah. It was wonderful talking to you more about your program. I've learned a bit about it myself. And we hope to keep on staging this kind of a show so that we can talk to other South African students from other cities of the world. Because I'm told this many, there are many of you out there. It is really, indeed, as you have mentioned, uh, gurus to the department, National Department of Higher Education. Uh, and technology and, and for for what what they are doing, um, I'm sure it is an investment that uh, will bring back returns. Uh, yes, 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 and uh, yes. I would also like to thank uh, the the show also for hosting me today. And yeah, like you said, also the department. Uh, I I also. Uh, you know, thank them for 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 availing this opportunity for me and also for all the other students that are now within this uh, scholarship and the other ones that are still gonna come to do this this type of work and and to all those who are doing this uh, who are being invested on, I would say I would encourage them to always reflect and also. Uh, give back in terms of uh, you know 
whatever they can in terms of creating a positive impact in our country and specifically in the continent of Africa and also other areas in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother. It's wonderful to have met you at the Johannesburg Business School during your MBA program. If I did not get that opportunity to meet with you through coaching, we wouldn't be here today. So we are building. Thank you so much. Yes, that was uh, Umpileli Bile, uh, a young man hailing from Mahiking in Northwest province of South Africa, currently finding himself in the city of love, Paris, <laughs> in France. <laughs> doing the Masters of Science uh, in Management of Technology Information System Motives program. Uh, we wanted to launch this initiative uh, with him, and this is the International Exchange and Further Education Training Development Program Abroad Show. It's a special program. We only stage it when we stage it when we come across a South African somewhere in the world that we want to showcase. And this evening we were showcasing Umpile Leibile. We are proud of you, Umpile. We wish you well and thank you for raising the South African flag very high out there together with other fellow South Africans. This was Cometa Radio Worldwide, the mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Our shows are based on the principle called the idea. We inform and entertain, develop and educate, empower and support, associate and network. That's the idea. My name is Sam Zima. I was your host and anchor this evening, together with my brother all the way from Francis Town in Botswana, Emmanuel and Jan and our brother all the way from Buyanala in the Northwest province, uh, uh, Rapula uh, 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 Murivani. Uh, thank you so much and uh, take care until we tune in again. We will be cutting out the podcast from here. If you want to access it, you can go to insightsonlinepodcast.com insightonlinepodcast.com or you just go to a uh, Apple podcast, Spotify, uh, YouTube, and you type in Commerza Radio Worldwide Insight Online Podcast, you will be able to access it. Or go to Commerza uh, website, which is www.commerza-goc.com and you will also read about the story about Umpile that we published there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care until we meet again. Goodbye, Umpile. All the best back there in Paris. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Thank you for everyone. Cheers, cheers. Goodbye. Sorry.